1990, Chinese archaeologists excavated a badly crushed human skull on a riverbank in Yunshen, Hubei province. This fossil, dubbed Yunshen II, along with an earlier find, Yunshen I, found in 1989, and a third skull unearthed in 2022, dates to nearly one million years ago. Based on its age and some coarse anatomical traits, Yunshen II was originally classified as Homo erectus, an early human species thought to include direct ancestors of us modern Homo sapiens. But the skull's features were difficult to interpret due to all this distortion, being crushed by the weight of a million years. It appeared to show a puzzling mix of primitive and more advanced traits. Paleoanthropologists have long been intrigued by these mosaic fossils, which fall in what researchers call the, quote, muddle in the middle, a period of human evolution around a million to 300,000 years ago. If you saw the Jebel Arud video, many experts do think this find is the oldest Homo sapien remains at 300,000 years ago. But even here, there is some pushback. Some experts think that it is too archaic looking. Something transitional to Homo sapiens. The conventional timeline right now says that Homo sapiens emerge around 200,000 years ago. But the real question here at Yunxian is were these Asian fossils just variants of Homo erectus, or do they represent a distinct lineage of archaic humans? Advances in technology have now allowed scientists to virtually peel back the damage and reveal the skull's original form. In a new study published in Science just a few days ago on September 25th, 2025, Xiaobo Fang of Shanxi University and colleagues applied the most advanced digital reconstruction techniques to Yunxian II. The team conducted high-resolution CT scans of the fragmented cranium and used structured light surface scanning to capture fine details applying a new algorithm technique, computationally uncrushing these fossils and mirroring these intact portions. Think of it like you had a sort of origami or 3D paper mask, and then you just flattened it. If you could analyze all the folds in that paper, you could figure out which way everything was bent and sort of uncrush it. And that's what they did here with these skull fragments, coming up with this 3D virtual reconstruction. And the researchers used a well-preserved comparative skull as a template to help guide this reconstruction. The end result is a much cleaner picture of this ancient human relative, enabling detailed anatomical measurements and comparisons for the first time in 35 years. Now they can compare it against other hominin fossils. Co-author Chris Stinger of the Natural History Museum said, quote, We feel that this study is a landmark step toward resolving the muddle in the middle that has preoccupied paleoanthropologists for decades. Like with Jebel Arud in modern-day Morocco, the Yunshen II cranium has this unique blend of archaic and advanced features. Some do look more like Homo erectus, like the long, low brain case and a projecting lower face or jaw that is more typical of primitive species. But other aspects look surprisingly modern. The brain volume appears larger than expected for Homo erectus, and the overall shape of the brain case and cheekbones is closer to later humans. The distance between the eye sockets are relatively narrow, and the nasal opening is broad and flat, features that are associated for much later branches in the human family tree. What's really interesting is that researchers identified distinctive characteristics that link Yunshan II to a recently proposed Asian species called Homo longi, nicknamed Dragon Man. Members of the Homo longi lineage tend to exhibit, quote, a larger brain case, narrower spacing between the eyes, a more pronounced brow depression, and a lower, elongated frontal bone, traits that are all evident in the Yunshan II skull. And it's exactly what you would expect if we're getting closer to Homo sapiens. But the shape is also reminiscent of earlier humans like Homo ergaster, or the African Homo heidelbergensis, while having the cranial capacity and facial structure closer to Homo sapiens. This is why the authors stop short of assigning Yunshan II definitively to any established species. Instead, they're analyzing the broader context of many fossils to discern its evolutionary relationship. As the study explains, quote, Phylogenetically, it is nested within the Homo longi clade. However, its mosaic morphology, which retains plesiomorphies, or ancestral traits, seen in Homo erectus and Homo ergaster, Kabwi, and Petrolona, while developing apomorphies, derived traits shared with Homo longi and Homo sapiens, may preserve transitional features close to the clade's origin. In other words, Yunshan II seems to represent a transitional form, an early member of the Homo longi lineage that still holds on to some primitive characteristics, even as it evolves more modern ones. To pinpoint Yunshan II on a family tree, 
Fang and colleagues conducted a comprehensive comparison of over 100 other fossil skulls and jaws from Africa, Asia, and Europe. Using a computer-assisted phylogenic analysis, which just means not eyeballing it, coming up with objective numbers, actual standards of measurements for the skull. With this, they grouped specimens by anatomical similarity and generated evolutionary trees that best explain the distribution of traits. The analysis clearly distinguished three major lineages of later Pleistocene humans, the Neanderthals, modern humans, Homo sapiens, and an Asian lineage the authors call the Homo longi clade. Yunxian too fell squarely in this Homo longi group, which includes the mysterious Denisovans, known more from their ancient DNA than their very few fossils. This new study argues that Denisovans were simply part of the Homo longi evolutionary line. The well-known Harbin skull from China, at 146,000 years old, which was named Homo longi in 2021, is considered a late representative of this lineage. Yunshan too appears to be an early representative, at a million years, maybe among the oldest of the Homo longi clade. I want to throw in a really cool side note here. If you watched my video, Homo sapiens were everywhere before out of Africa, it documents the different groups that emerged out of Africa before the major out of Africa migration around 70,000 years ago. Homo sapiens were in Greece around 200,000 years ago, and throughout the Levant and Arabia about around 120,000 years ago. So it is interesting to wonder if Homo sapiens emerged and got into Asia if they came in contact with Homo longi. We know they came in contact with Denisovans much later, because some populations even have up to 5% Denisovan admixture. But I just always want to remind people that Homo sapiens were venturing out around 200,000 years ago, even if those populations retreated or died out. But by the researchers' calculations, the Homo longi lineage and our own Homo sapiens lineage share a common ancestor around 1.3 million years ago. In their scenario, this ancestor's descendants split into two branches, one branch in East Asia that led to Homo longi, including Denisovans and the fossils like Yunxian and Harbin, and another branch that eventually gave rise to Homo sapiens in Africa. Meanwhile, a separate branch leading to Neanderthals had already broken off slightly earlier, around 1.4 million years ago. If these dates are correct, it means the divergence between modern humans and our sister groups happened hundreds of thousands of years earlier than traditional estimates, which often place those splits around 500,000 to 700,000 years ago. This just about doubles that timeline. Quote, given its geological age of 0.94, to 1.1 million years ago, Yunshan is close to the theoretical time of origin of the Longi and Sapiens clades. A big takeaway here is that Yunshan too might be the quote, closest we've gotten to the ancestor of modern humans. The study even proposes that some European fossils, like the roughly 900,000 year old Homo antecessor from Spain, belong to the Homo Longi lineage, rather than being the direct ancestors of Neanderthals as it was commonly thought. His findings paint a radically different picture of the Middle Pleistocene. Rather than a single Homo erectus lineage gradually giving rise to later humans, like Neanderthals and Denisovans, it appears that multiple distinct human lineages coexisted and diverged early in that era. Quote, the narrow temporal gap between Yunshen and deeper Longi nodes suggests rapid early diversification of the Longi clade, as in the Sapiens and Neanderthal clades. It's believed that Homo sapiens had been interbreeding with Neanderthals for about 20,000 years, from 60,000 to 40,000 years ago. So imagine how much intermixing there was with all these earlier branches of Homo. We're different species, but not so different that we can't reproduce with each other. And so you can imagine the admixture that would occur if we put this back to over 1 million years ago. Longi, Neanderthal, and Sapien all intermixing. By far the biggest takeaway here is that if the Yunshan Tu skull truly captures a moment soon after these lineages split, the implications might change everything, because it would quote, more or less double the time of origin of Homo sapiens, pushing our roots back to over 1 million years ago. That's a huge claim, and you might be confused at how sapiens got brought up here if this was all about Homo longi. Let me explain. The prevailing consensus has been that the last common ancestor of Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans lived only about 500 to 700,000 years ago. In that view, the Neanderthals and Denisovans branched off first, while our lineage kept evolving separately until anatomically modern humans, Homo sapiens, emerged around 300,000 years ago in Africa. But by showing Yunshan at roughly 1 million years old, and if it belongs to the very base of the Asian Homo longi clade, 
which is a sister group to our own lineage, it implies that the split between the Homo sapiens clade and the Homo longi slash Denisovan clade must have already occurred by about 1 to 1.3 million years ago. In other words, we exist today, and we know that Longi took a different track. That means that the start of our track was around a million years ago, not just 300,000 years ago. That does not mean that fully modern humans were around a million years ago. Again, some experts don't even believe we have that at Jebel Arud. But rather that the evolutionary line leading to us had already separated from its closest relatives by that time. But it really would be the Homo sapien branch of our family tree. Now to be clear, this is going to be heavily scrutinized and would seem to go against the more hard science of the DNA evidence, which is why so many experts favor the younger divergence date But of course, that date too has been pushed back multiple times in just my lifetime. And it also shifts attention to Asia. The results hint that some evolutionary developments leading to modern humans may have occurred in Western Asia rather than exclusively in Africa, which would at the very least modify the dominant out of African model, holding that humans and other recent lineages arose in Africa and spread outward. Quote, there's a big change potentially happening here, where East Asia is now playing a very key role in hominin evolution, said Michael Petraglia, a paleoanthropologist who wasn't directly involved in the study. But it's important to note that the study's authors stop short of claiming that Homo sapiens actually first evolved in Asia. But they do argue that the Homo longi clade, an Asian sister group to modern humans, was diversifying early and fast alongside our direct ancestors. And like I said, expect a ton of pushback on this, Some researchers argue that many middle Pleistocene fossils are extremely hard to categorize because they share mixed features. Quote, Yunshen Tu and other homo fossils display varying sets of skeletal traits and cannot easily be sorted into distinct lineages, says paleoanthropologist Sheila Athrea, who also was not directly involved in the research. And even the idea of a homo longi clade itself is debated. When the Harbin dragon man skull was described in 2021, some experts doubted it warranted a new species name suggested it could be an offshoot of Homo erectus. This new analysis by Feng et al. suggests Homo longi and Denisovans were of the same lineage, and that's why it has the implications that Homo sapiens split that early as well. Hannah Devlin wrote, quote, The findings run counter to some recent analyses based on genetic comparisons, referencing that DNA studies of living people and ancient remains generally estimate a much later divergence on the order of 600,000 years ago, between this line leading to Neanderthals and Denisovans, and the line to Homo sapiens. Going backwards by knowing how different they are, and estimates on how long it takes to differentiate. My biggest pushback would come from just that we are studying the shape of a skull. Like paleoanthropologist Andy Harries who points out that ancient DNA has shown that skeletal features, quote, are not always a perfect indicator of human evolution. Again, when you know that these Homo species are so similar that they can interbreed, and we know that they did, and this is occurring over a million years, Drawing that hard line between different species is always going to be difficult. And so when you're working with a new technology applied to such broken fragments, it just introduces a lot of room for error. So why Dr. Fido Welker, an expert in ancient proteins, agrees that the proposed divergence dates are surprising and hopes for molecular data from Yunshan 2. This would be critical, but probably very hard to obtain. But it's all definitely something to keep your eye on. It's not some wild fringe internet claim. Everyone involved in here are academics, going through peer-reviewed systems. And I just want to end here on the fact that I actually stopped working on my video for this week, which was the Saruti Mastodon site, which is claiming to have found evidence of humans in America, modern California, at around 130,000 years ago. Currently, it is not believed that any other humans, not just Homo sapiens, but not Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo erectus, nobody was in America until the Homo sapiens around 20,000 years ago. This site would more than 6x that timeline. And I hate to put a spoiler here, but I'm not convinced by it. While my personal belief is that Homo erectus could have easily gotten to the Americas. Experts think they for sure used tools, they likely had fire, and many think they even made boats. That's how they get spread all throughout modern Indonesia. And it's believed that Neanderthals had boats using them to get through the Mediterranean islands. So when we're working with a million years here, and we're finding them in East China, the mainstream consensus is that Homo sapiens made it from Africa to Australia in just 5,000 years max, maybe even quicker than that. Uh, Just taken all together, I think it is a very tame claim, even if it is speculative, 
that some type of human made it into the Americas long before 20,000 years ago. So that'll be kind of a teaser for next week when I get back to that one. But what do you think of these finds at Yunshen 2? Let me know down in the comments. Please hit that like button. It really does help me out. And I'll see you in the next one.